Hey, what's going on guys? Another knife review for you today. Today we're looking at the Mantis MK4. This is the Vuja Day, which is a nice little play on words, deja vu. Um, really interesting. This is basically a balisong and a karambit combined. So you can see it's a balisong, literally, but with a, uh, a karambit uh, design overall. Okay, so one's open, using like a karambit, it's got the finger ring here. Okay, obviously mostly used in a reverse grip, but you could use it in a standard grip the pinky through there or you can use it without the ring very very cool um, when I first saw this I knew I'd have to eventually get one I love battle songs and I love karambits so I knew I'd have to try it uh, my expectations were extremely low because it seems like a very much a novelty item all right and the first thing I want to talk about in this review is when and where and why would you want this knife or what are you going to use it for right now any knife that has a sharp edge you can use for utility purposes okay this one is no different this has a very nice very sharp hawk bill blade all right and this will bite into packages and whatever you got to cut you know different types of uh, uh cord rope blah 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 right tape it cuts it cuts things all knives do is it the most practical knife to use for say an edc or utility blade no it's not um the biggest thing to consider here though is the fact that this is not a balisong looking knife it's not a balisong style knife this is literally a balisong all right so all the laws will be applicable in this particular case as a balisong all right so it's limiting a lot of people love balisongs but you know here in pennsylvania a very liberal state i, I can carry 50 guns on me if i want a thousand rounds of ammunition but i can't legally carry a balisong on paper by law can't carry one i can own them i can have them on property whatever but i can't carry around so it's limiting as far as uh, legal issues. And of course, if you're talking about overseas, forget about it. Uh, I don't know of any country where you can just walk around the battle song. Uh, besides America, and even in America, it, it's quite limited. Uh, yes, these laws are ridiculous and stupid, but I don't control the laws, so that's just how it is. So first thing to consider here is, can you really have a battle song where you live? Now, whether you can, have, whether you can carry one or not, doesn't matter for my particular case because I still like this knife and I still use this knife around the house and I still love this knife. Uh, it is it does have a novelty factor to it, but I was extremely pleasantly surprised in the quality of this knife. The fin finish is superb. The mechanisms on this are really really nice. Everything is very smooth. Everything is is highly finished uh, in the way it feels, the way it looks, and the way it functions. Um, let me tell you, show you exactly how this works. All right, so you see we have a folding knife here, and it's locked closed, okay? And we have a button here. This works the same exact way as any button lock. So if you guys are used to uh, button lock autos, you know, obviously you push the button, blade shoots out or whatever. Same exact concept. We have a, uh, you know, steel rod in there, and uh, the bottom is a lot wider, so when you push it in, you can see how that works. It looks like a little piston or something, or actually like a little barbell. All right, but when it's not depressed, it's in the way. It does not allow this to open. When you push it up, or in this case down, I suppose, um, you're basically putting that bar in the middle so it can move, okay? So you have to push the button in to open this knife, okay? Now once you do, the first thing you notice is that this latch um, is on a spring system, okay? It's a spring latch. It, it will automatically go into that particular position. The reason for this is because when this knife swings around, that is the perfect position to now lock the handles open, okay? Again, using the same collar, that same button, it swings around. It's nice flow-through design, which allows me to show you how this mechanism works. Also keeps lint and crap out. But as it swings around, you see it will lock open. All right, this is great for its specific function and purpose as a defensive blade, all right? Um, for defense, if you were to use, and there's multiple ways you can open this, but if you were to push this button, swing this handle blade out, it would come around and it would lock, okay? You know, especially obviously with your grip, it would lock open, okay? So you can quickly get this blade out and have it locked open for you and use the finger ring and then you have a cramet, okay? Very effective defensive blade. It's not something that easily is gonna be taken away from you because your finger's literally through the knife, blah, blah, blah. We all know about cramets, they're great knives. So, the advantage there is the fact that it's fast. I mean, as far as a folding cramp it goes, it's very, very fast, especially if you practice with it. The two ways that I've, I've you know, practiced this particular one, how I open it, 
is as far as a, a regular grip, if I were to, if I wanted to open this in a standard grip, I would put, I would hold it like this with a smaller handle, not the ring handle, okay? I would brace my ring finger right here on the back of this scale. All right, then use my thumb to push, to press this, basically unlock the knife and push it open. By doing this, essentially what I have here is a balisong while holding the safe handle. So at this point, you could do whatever you would normally do to open your balisong. You can do just a simple, um, you know, horizontal opening, you know, very straightforward stuff. As far as, you know, getting this just to flip it as a balisong, it's obviously a very awkward shape. It would take a lot of practice and it's still very limiting. But you could still do aerials, you can do rollovers and stuff like that. It's just incredibly difficult and uh, unlike any other balisong design out there. But as far as just, you know, using balisong style techniques to quickly open this, yes, anything you know with the balisong can carry over to this knife with enough practice. So for, again, for a standard opening, I would just hold it like this. Basically, I have the safe handle in my hand, all right? Um, even though this has the latch, the ring side is technically the bite handle because that's where the blade edge is facing. So again, open this, I would just depress that, unlock it, and then open it like I would any other ballast song. In which case I can stick my pinky through the ring if I wanted to, and now I'm in a forward grip, okay? As far as a reverse grip, which would be much more preferred, especially since it is a karambit, um, I would hold it like this, okay? Holding that, you know, bite handle and depress the, the lock. And while I do that, swing it up. Okay, so it will open for me, and then now I can just switch my grip around, and my grip will actually lock this if it didn't lock from the pressure, and then I'm in a reverse grip, okay? So yes, this can be used very fast and efficiently to get, basically, a nice cramp it in your hand. Uh, the problem with this uh, locking mechanism is that it's designed for that purpose, to get it open and locked quickly. Um, this is not an easy knife to operate open and close one-handed. So if you were to get this for utility purposes, um, you'd find it very difficult to close this properly with one hand. See how obviously the, the spring keeps that latch down? So the best way I can show you this is I would just push this, kind of use your hands to separate. See how I'm using my finger to separate that? You have to use your thumb to kind of get this spring on the inside, then you can close it. So it is very, um, Inconvenient is the best way I can say that. You can, as you can see, you can open and close it with one hand. All right, once again, swing this open. Okay, so now you're in your karambit mode. Um, or, of course, you could just switch your grips to, you know, a standard grip, use it for utility, whatever. But you're going to find it very difficult with one hand to quickly close this. This is, you know, literally, I'm doing this as fast as I can. Now yeah, it's stuck. There we go. All right, so keep in mind if you're using this for utility purposes, you're gonna use two hands, okay? You're done using it. You'll literally just use two hands to, to close this properly. All right, so it's more of an efficient way to close it. All right, not a big deal, but definitely worth mentioning. It's not designed to be a utility knife. Um, with all that said, you could use this for a utility knife. You have a nice sharp hawkbill blade, okay? This will very effectively open boxes, rip through things. Um, it's just not preferred, nor is it designed for that. All right, the weight on this is 3.4 ounces, so it's very light, uh, although it is fully steel lined. Okay, so very strong G10 scales on this. You can see full liners, all four handles. Actually, it's two handles, but all four sides. And obviously, by design, all these holes will be lightning holes so that it's not as heavy. And for looks. But it's really securely made. As far as the grip, very comfortable. Um, the finger trolls work very nicely for my hand. Of course, there is jimping on here, so my finger does not want to slip, but it very comfortably fits in my hand. There is jimping on the back here with the thumb ramp. So very effective. I mean, especially with your pinky through the ring, it's not going anywhere. There's no way this is going to fall out of your hand or slip. Very nice. In reverse grip, which is more important for a karambit, same deal. We have a, a lot of jimping here. Kind of awkward. My thumb doesn't naturally rest like this. My, my thumb naturally rests on top here but not a big deal. The pinky is very secure in there. You know, with the choils and the ring, forget about it. You're not gonna, you're not gonna let go of this knife. It's not gonna slip out of your hand. It's a very comfortable, very nice fit. Uh, as far as how this carries, it carries very nicely with this pocket clip. It has a deep style clip, but of course the ring is always gonna be exposed in any karambit, as it should be. Um, but it does carry very nicely. Tension on it is very nice. All right, obviously the holes on top to get to those screws if you wanted to remove it. If you look at the handle here, 
you'll notice it is swappable to left side carry um, but it will only be tip up and again being a karambit that's all you want you don't necessarily want to carry it tip down um, if you did you don't have the option but no one really wants to do that so that's not a problem um, but like just I mean the female sides the pivot screws everything's just really nicely done all right, I'll give you a shot in here. You can see the uh, bronze phosphorus bushings, or excuse me, washers in there, not bushings. It's very smooth. It works really nicely. Came extremely sharp. And here's where we get into the, the mistress section of the review, the mysterious. <laughs> mistress is totally something different. <laughs> mysterious section. Um, this has a two inch blade, okay? Seven inches overall. But that two inch hawkbill blade is an M. VX steel. What the hell is that? Well, we don't really know. And that's the only thing with Mantis. It's the only thing with a, a gripe some people have with it is that they kind of rename their steels. Um, I don't know of any source where you can go buy MVX steel. That's exclusively, you know, to it's not a specific type of steel necessarily. It's just their name for their steel. So it's hard to really compare it. If, if I do a review on a knife and I say, hey, AUS 8, Boom, people know what I'm talking about. Hey, this is D2. Boom, people know what I'm talking about. Uh, VG10, blah, blah, blah. It goes on and on, right? But because they name their own steel, and Cold Steel has done this before, where they, you know, they're carbon V and stuff. It's just they're, they're making something seem a little more exclusive than it is. But by renaming it, it's confusing for, for knife people because knife-specific people, we, we kind of go by these different types of names. If you give me a name of a steel, I have a better understanding instantly of how that may perform based upon my history with that exact same steel from different companies. It gives me a reference. So by calling this MVX, I have no reference. That being said, uh, most people agree it's very similar to a D2 in performance as far as the edge retention and, and everything else. Um, I don't really find that the case. I didn't do extensive cutting with this because it is specifically a defensive blade, but the cutting I have done with it, I really want to say it's better than AUS, but not as good as, say, VG10. Um, it's somewhere in the middle. It's not a cheap, crappy steel. I just wish that whatever it really was, that they would just tell us what it was. But it is what it is. So that's the deal with that. Um, price on these $79.99 is the full MSRP. Believe it or not, they sell for about $79.95, you know, $78, bucks, $79. Bucks. So they get pretty much full MSRP uh, wherever you see these sold. Is it worth $80? Bucks? Is it a novelty? Yes, it's a novelty. Uh, is it made very well? Yes, it is made very well, and you can actually use this blade. It's very usable. Uh, the only issues we have with this is that, you know, the legality issues surrounding, you know, the fact that it's a battle song. Um, and of course, you know, I'm not going to get really deep into it, but if you were to actually use a knife like this on a person, you better have, you know, proof without a doubt that your life was on the line. All right. Uh, it's not a very court friendly knife as I would put it. There's, there's, you know, if you, if you, I don't know, if someone's hurting you really bad, trying to kill you, whatever, and you use a knife, use a, a, a buck folder. You know, a, a jury of your peers will be a little more forgiving than if you use something like this. Non-knife people see these things as weapons, not tools. And this is a very usable tool. It's just not many people will see that outside of the knife community. So as far as legal, you know, legal issues or legal thoughts are concerned, definitely something to think about. But uh, the ultimate question is, is it worth the money? I think the quality is definitely there. It's a very cool uh, knife to play with, honestly. Uh, that's where the novelty comes in. All right. Just depends. If you can legally carry a battle song, it'd be definitely something cool to check out. Um, I love hookbill blades. It is very effective as far as uh, you know the cutting performance. So I think it's worth it. It's there. It's just going to be personal preference. But I will say this: if you're a battle song person, it's a must-have for your collection. Absolutely, and to play with. It's definitely unique. So that is the the Mantis MK4 Vujade. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you have an awesome day, and I'll see you soon. Take care.